So um, our vision is to reconnect people and communities through better transportation. Uh, and so uh, for me, that's, that started, uh, I grew up in Coscob, Connecticut. Uh, where are you from? From Connecticut? Nice. Nice. <laughs> Born in New York, grew up in Connecticut. Oh, nice. <laughs> I should throw out some other, I live in California now. Anybody? All right. Nice. Nice. All right. Um, so, so growing up there in Connecticut, finance is a big, a big part of the culture there, right? And everyone actually grew up in, in Greenwich, Connecticut, where there's a lot of hedge funds and finance companies, and everyone says, oh, whatever you do, you got to get into, you got to get into finance, and that's how they define success. Uh, and at a young age, I had a few experiences, both in, in high school and, and later in college, where I really saw the value of community, and that's what made me the most happy. Uh, and so when I pursued college uh, and my first job before college, it was in hospitality because it was that balance between entrepreneurship and people. Uh, and so I, I love service and, and serving people. And so uh, I went to Cornell Hotel School, uh, studied hospitality. Um, and uh, by my senior year, uh, I had finished up most of my courses. And I'd also had experiences when I was driving home from college. I, I drove home and often found that you know, maybe I'd get a friend to come along with me, but there were always empty seats, at least three empty seats in, in the car. And I thought, well, how could I be studying hospitality where the main business metric was occupancy? Uh, and then everywhere we drove, we had low occupancy. It was like a failing hotel. What if you took the same principles of a hotel, which is you need to have at least over 60% occupancy to survive? What if you took those to the car or to any other system? Um, and so, what I really saw is a massive opportunity uh, to, to upend the future of transportation uh, and in the process bring people together. Uh, and so, so now talking a little bit about what we see as the, the future of transportation, um, the way I like to think about it is if you zoom out on history and you think about infrastructure, um, there were a few different infrastructures. There was, in the, in the US, there was canals, there was railroads, and then there was highways. And uh, being from the East Coast, when I think of a city, I think of New York. Uh, and so I think of New York City, it's basically 80% paved. And I don't imagine that, that changing anytime soon. And, and so seeing that, uh, and then you know, I started asking questions or, or doing research about, well, if we're not going to get a new physical infrastructure, you know, how could we make, it, make what exists better? And, and what are the existing problems in that system? Uh, and I learned that in the United States, over $2 trillion, $2.25 trillion is spent on the auto infrastructure. That's car payments, insurance, everything, maintenance, everything that goes into the car. $2.25 trillion goes into overall consumer transportation. 2.15 of the 2.25 is spent on cars. So when you think about planes, public transit, everything else is the small part. It's, you know, uh, the difference between 2.25, 2.15 trillion dollars. So, uh, Really, and then globally, 13% of GDP is tied up in this auto transportation system. And yet, a car, all these cars, we see them here, are parked outside and they're utilized 4% of the time. So you have 13% of GDP used 4% of the time. And when those cars are used, they're typically uh, under 20% occupied, meaning there's 80% of seats are empty. And so you basically have virtually 1% efficiency in 13% of global GDP. And that will change. That will absolutely change. Because population density in our cities is rising rapidly. Uh, you know, we're, we're all stuck in traffic. Uh, and the average American household spends over $9,000 every year uh, on owning and operating a car. Uh, the only household expense that's higher is the house. Um, and, and nothing's been done about this for a really long time. Uh, and so <clears throat> what we see happening uh, is that in our lifetime, well, one, uh, so I'm, I'm 31. Uh, I believe when I have uh, kids that I will not teach them to drive, number one. I think that's interesting. Uh, I don't think they will need to uh, own a car, uh, and I don't even think they'll need to drive. Uh, so now I'll talk about kind of how, how we get from there to there and then how, how Lyft fits into that. Um, so if you think about what happened to, to DVDs, right? When you, when you go out, uh, well, I don't know if you guys ever did this, but uh, we used to buy a DVD. It's, it seems so irrelevant now um, because you can, you can watch something on Netflix. I think the same will be true uh, of car ownership. And it's cool that you're actually using parking 
signs as art because I actually think that all of the infrastructures like, or maybe that's actually functional, I don't know. Um, but uh, I think a lot of the infrastructure that, that we have today uh, around transportation will, will no longer be necessary and, and our cities uh, will be, will, we will need roads, less roads than we have. Probably 50% of roads will be unnecessary. Parking lots will be unnecessary. Um, and so, so let me tell you about what we're doing at Lyft and, and how we get to that, that future.